What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Team Sum Circus live video. To on the left side here, we have Melodius going up against Ubel on the Ubel map, by the way, from the sneak peek of Phantom Nightmare. You know, the Ubel deck just keeps getting more support. support. You know, we're on, I think this is going to be wave three of support when we get the one from hopefully from Battle of Legends. We're going to be seeing a normal summon of a dark deck, Beckoning Beast, here with the Ubel choosing to go first, winning the die roll. Before we dive in, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, help the channel a lot. We're going to be seeing a hit it with a Veiler here. Um, Pretty nice failure if they don't have another copy of the gates in the hand here. We do see a prosperity, which can maybe give us access to the gates. We're going to be banishing a copy of... Now, there's a few cards in our extra deck that we can banish. We're choosing to only banish three here. We see a gate, a prosperity, and an ash. That's an easy choice there, going for that gate. That was a card we were looking for. We're going to be linking away for a copy of Almirage here. Activating the gates. And they are going to take a second to read these cards, including the Almirage. Running a search for the Dark Beckoning Beast. I don't know why they had a link away for those. I'm not too familiar with the U-Bell combos myself. I know some people are saying that they want me to do it on the channel. I think it's between like U-Bell and then the Light Sworn deck and then... Um, and then Tempai. We're going to be seeing a Talents attempting to draw two, but we are under Prosperity, so we cannot do that. We have to then rip a card from the hand here. We see a copy of... Is that Big Banky? No, that was Koopa, I'm pretty sure. Um, but we're going to be keeping a Cobb of the Grave, Imperm, and a Ghost Ogre in the hand. Uh, yeah, that's pretty rough. You know, a bunch of hand traps there. They're going to have to be kind of careful following this up. They're going to activate a copy of Gates, discarding a card... Discarding the copy of Ash Blossom to add back that copy of Dark Beckoning Beast. Do we hit it with a copy of Ogre is a question. We do see that Ogre being hit. Uh, maybe they had the other Dark Beckoning Beast in the hand. That's why they had to link away. Um, we're going to see them cut their deck and then draw for turn here. We also saw them discarding the Ash, you know. You don't need that in the hand if your opponent has Cobb of the Grave. I'm going to see a set two in pass. They drew into a trap, maybe. I mean, you knew they had Imperm, Cobb of the Grave. So, would they really set both of them here? I feel like they probably just keep the Imperm in the hand and then just Cobb of the Grave. Hitting something else so that you'd think that they drew into something. They probably drew into a monster, though. Like, you know they have the Dark Beckoning Beast in the hand, so you could just Cobble the Grave that. And then not really care. We're going to see them impermit. Okay, interesting. I mean, Almirage is a cyber, so we can't really go into Yama here. They're going to try to, but Solar Rage, you definitely can't be doing that. Yeah, we're going to be... Okay, I was going to say, could you imagine Solar Rage just had two monsters? Oh, my lord. I mean, you could go into Dark Charm, but they don't have any Darks and Grave. I'm going to see a pass turn on this. We have the Asinato, that is full combo here, with a combo here to protect them. They see, they see a Samurai to Lotus as well. I feel like you probably just, I don't even know what you do here. Because you can't do normal summon Samurai to Lotus uh, or Samsara to Lotus because you're going to hit with that copy of Cobb of the Grave. You can't really do very much. I think also the Terra Incarnate is the hand in, in the hand as well. We're going to see that copy of Baka being summoned here. Then we dumped the copy of Refrain and then someone else, I believe, was probably the Soprano. We're going to summon out a copy here of the Shapina. Uh, so it could have been even Couplet um, that we had dumped there. We're going to be activating the effect to add back. It was not Couplet. We're going to be adding back the Refrain. We can then normal summon the Refrain, activating the effect, searching for the copy of Couplet. And that's going to be letting us summon out the copy of Soprano in the graveyard or the other one that we dumped. Uh, we already had the copy of Soprano in the graveyard. 
So we're going to be seeing the Cupola summon back up that copy of the Soprano because it was what the card was discarded. We can't activate the effect because there's nothing in the graveyard to be adding back. We're going to be then scaling the Cupola, activating the effect of Cupola. You know, this is a very standard line in the pure Melodious deck, searching for the copy of the Concerto here. Now, this, this deck, I do know. I know this deck very well. We're going to be seeing the effect of Concerto being activated here. We're going to be using most likely the Cupola, the Refrain, and then a copy of the... Yeah, the... The Soprano here. This is going to go for the copy of Etoile. Um, this is just to play around Nibiru as well as, you know, you want to be able to summon out the um, Soprano off, or they want to be summoning the Shapina off the Baka when it's summoned back out. We're going to see the scales being placed onto the field. Um, and we could link away if we wanted to, to go into a copy of SP. That's another option as well. Uh, we won't be able to activate the effect of anything that's not in light, though, this turn. So we're going to activate the effect of the, sh the Soprano going into our copy of the Shaberta here. Being able to trip a Dilly Crow is really good in this deck. You know, being able to banish your spirits, your Samurai to Lotuses, and then, of course, um, I guess in this case, hitting any, like, random cards that you want to be able to add back. So we're going to be then being able to draw the copy of off Concerto by putting back. We're going to summon out the Shapina, which has to be in defense position because of the fact that Bacha summons it in defense position. We're going to add back the copy of Soprano here with the Shapina. But yeah, a little bit of a misplay there. We're going to then add for the effect of the refrain to dump, targeting the Etoile here. Just to boost the attack. Probably the copy of either Cannon. Or the copy of the Sonata here. We're then going to be able to Pendulum Summon out the Soprano, adding back that copy of the Sonata. And then we can Special Summon out the Sonata for free here. And this is going to make it everything gain attack. So we can go Battle Phase, attack into it. Dealing some damage, dealing 17 here. And then we're going to be able to attack with the copy of the soprano and i want to pretend that the copy of shapina is in defense which we would still have game here because everything's getting 500 then we're getting 600 and then like we could just boost up the shapin uh the the shaberta um which brings us to over 10,000 damage it brings us to like 11,000 something damage so yeah we definitely had enough game there with the correct play um didn't really have much like imagine talenting your opponent's hand when your hands are like so bad because you can't draw anymore and you ended up seeing like two hand traps and a call by the grave like <laughs> oh my and you can't even discard ash because you know it's gonna get hit with the call by the grave so like you're you're already in a bad position there it might be worth just discarding the incarnate because the ash is gonna eat one of those up and then you're like, if you had another extender, like you know, the Terror Incarnate's not gonna do anything versus you, or for you. It's it's just a horrible card in the hand. So it's like, you might as well, at least discard a bad card and hope that you draw a good card. Um, but not the best showing for you, Bell. Turn zero at least. The deck is kind of bricky right now. Like I do think that like you shouldn't probably play the deck uh, until after the new card comes out, cause like. It doesn't necessarily change a deck. Like, it's kind of crazy to say, like, it's only one extra deck card. Um, but it makes it just deck this so much better. Like, now, obviously, you, know, you have to play the Unchained card. So you're definitely playing a little bit more Unchained package uh, going for that Rage. But, like, that card's just an Omni Negate, essentially. And just, like, the decks that have an Omni Negate are just kind of, I don't want to say better than decks that don't, but just can be better. We're going to be seeing you, Bell, choose to go first once again here. Starting off with the gates, being able to search for a copy of the Beckoning Beast. Already a good start, being able to normal summon with the Beckoning Beast. Being able to search for another copy of gates. You know, a free discard at this point. You also have a Cosmic in the hand. That's probably going to be hit for the scales, but a decent card nonetheless. And a Super Poly as well, you know, being a really good card, this format here. It looks like we just have hand traps, so we don't have anything that kind of, kind of continue. We're going to go into our copy of the Almirage. 
and there's not much we can do here. We're going to be able to activate the effect of the uh, Spirit of Yubel. That can let us bring out itself. And they do have an imprim for the Spirit of Yubel. And are going to be able to make it so that they can't search for Nightmare Pain. To be honest, that's kind of huge. But we set two cards here and we pass. And this is a U-Bell, so we can use Super Poly for it, which is really nice. But still really good to uh, to kind of hit that cup stuff. So we have Super Poly, and then we also have a copy of Cosmic and then Ash Blossom. So we're going to see them go battle phase evenly matched. This, <laughs> this Melodious player just keeps evenly matching people, which is kind of crazy. Like we've seen it twice on the channel so far. This player just evenly matches for their life savings here. So they're going to read the U-Bell. Keeping the U-Bell on the field is definitely uh, an interesting choice. Because like we had Super Poly. Super Poly clears the Melodious board. We're going to summon with the Aria, activate the Kupla. Then we're going to activate the effect of the Kupla here, letting us search. I'm not too sure what we normal summoned up the Aria, though. We could use it in the hand, and it would tell them the same thing. We're going to activate the Kupla here, using the Aria and itself. Yeah, we definitely did not need the normal summon with that copy of Aria. They may have thought they had to. Uh, because of the couple, but you don't. It just says if you have no monsters on the field that are not melodious, you can search. So then we're going to be summoning off the Baka, summoning with the copy of the Refrain, and we're going to be hitting that with an Ash Blossom here. I'm going to let us stop to search, which is honestly pretty, pretty good. Um, we can link away into the link, though, and that's going to let us get the Concerto draw and then also pitch a card from the hand and then search. Or summon out two bodies here, being the Soprano and then the copy of uh, the Shapina. Shapina can then add back, and Shapina or and the Soprano can add back as well. So like we're we're pretty much big chilling no matter what. They're gonna go for a Bloom. Or the thing about SP, I mean, you can't SP out that copy of the uh, Spirit. Um, maybe it's like trying to go to a simplified game state. Then we're going to be doing Chainlink 1, the copy of SP, Chainlink 2, Concerto. Um, and we're trying to get rid of that Spirit. I mean, it does put us on, you know, not better have it, but. We're on one card. So, like, you're going to be struggling there while we have a draw a summon and uh and yeah a lot more we also can summon out the copy of the uh, sonata in the hand because we do have the aria now on the field um that was summon off the copy of bacha it's like we do have a lot because that card can't be destroyed by battle uh, nor be targeted so it's it's still pretty nice But we're going to be then passing turn. We do have the copy of the gates that we can activate here, letting us search for the Dark Beckoning Beast. You know, being the last card in the hand and then having one other card, and now we have access to another one. It's pretty nice. We're going to then normal summon with a Dark Beckoning Beast, and I believe we can activate its effects if we play multiple beasts, or multiple gates, I should say. And just kind of getting us more recursion here. We're going to activate the gates effect, discarding the card to summon out that copy of the beast from the graveyard. And they can respond with SP. That would remove the link problem. But we're going to let it resolve here. I suppose you can just let them go into whatever they want to. Go into a copy of Yama here. If they activate the effect, it's going to get hit with a copy of SP. But if they don't, they can actually beat over that SP. 
interesting option here. Which one do they choose is the question. We're going to see a Droplets here, not even needing to activate the effect, discarding the copy of the Sonata to negate it. That's crazy. Because you we don't even know their last card. Which is Nightmare Throne, I think. We're going to activate the Nightmare Throne here. Which is a crazy card to activate. Also, leaving that copy of Yama on the field gives us access to Rage. And the Samurai Scrumber does not have to destroy as well, so that can be a target that we're going to be doing. We're going to dump the Spirit of Ubel, which can then activate. Or we destroy. It doesn't dump, but same thing. You can take one, add it to your hand, or destroy it. So then if the Ubel is sold by a card effect, you can add to your hand one Ubel monster from your graveyard. Or Banishment, and then, yeah, okay. So we're going to be destroying the copy of Ubel, and then Ubel. can be special summoned here, which we are going to special summon. You just attack into the SP, make them take damage. Then link away into Rage, I guess? But, like, you can't target any of their stuff. So Rage is, like, so mid. That's the kind of the problem with... Like, the Melodious deck does deal with the U-Bell deck pretty well. Um, unless they get out their Link monster. But, like, SP can be a pretty good... Um, but... Yeah, Ubel really just stops a lot. Like, Ubel shits on Tempai. Melodious shits on Tempai. But Tempai shits on every other deck in the format. So it's like a weird thing. And then, like, Ubel gets shit on by Melodious. And Melodious shits on Tempai half the time if they go first because they're able to set up the Aria lock. And it's just like, okay, well. Melodious is just a crazy deck, and like with a gas, it can take, it can just beat Snake Eyes consistently, but it's just not good enough. So we're gonna be activating Nightmare Throne, destroying. I don't even know how we're doing that. How are we destroying? Oh, we're just gonna go end turn, and then Ubel's gonna be destroying the copy of the Yama, or tributing off the Yama. That's interesting there. So we're going to activate Kupla, but we can't because we're under... We have SP on the field. Are we going to catch that? That's huge if we don't catch that. No, we have to catch that. They're trying to go to see Ubel's... If Ubel gets to affect the... Melodious cards because the text of Ubel is like really weird. It's like when this face up affects damage, four damage, collect, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster. Um, but Bloom is like you don't take any battle damage, so it's like, eh. So they're trying to find out how it works here. But we're going to activate Concerto to Fuse. Kupla and then another copy of Sonata in the hand. That's crazy. I'm going for the Aria. Uh, that's uh, that's kind of risky. We're going to go for the copy of the Vaka. And that's going to let us scale both of them back. I mean, having that Concerto search is so huge here. You definitely can't be doing that. I mean, you have SP on the field. But 
are going to be seeing them summon off Baka, scale them both, summoning up most likely the Shapina. And like, if they beat over the the Ubel, like, can Ubel even be destroyed by battle? I don't think so. Yeah, so it can't be destroyed by battle and you take no battle damage. So like, I'm just summoning up the copy of the The uh, Soprano, Soprano, add back. Yeah. So then we can bump up the Baka. We probably dump the Shapina here, right? So we can summon it back out with the copy of Bacha. Oh, they're going to be reading the Spirit, okay. If a Yubo monster leaves the field, okay. Oh, they're trying to ask if a Yubo monster leaves the field due to Yubo's effect, okay. I mean, it's a cost. It's like a maintenance cost, so it doesn't really leave the field because of its effect. It leaves the field. It, it does. Like, it's such a weird thing. I think that it leaves the field because of just cost, not because of an effect, but that's kind of what they were asking. We're then going to go fusion into a copy of Etoile. And then we're going to get the effect here of Baka to be able to summon back out. We're going to be summoning back out the copy of Shapina that we dumped. And we also get to search for Concerto. I can't believe we searched with Concerto while SP is on the field. That's crazy. And Shapina's in defense. Off the Bacha. We're going to Shapina add back the copy of the green girl here. Sonata, then we summon up the Sonata, summon up another Sonata, and now everything's getting a thousand attack here, which is very huge. But you take no battle damage. But you can always bounce the Etoile. It can go like Etoile, bounce the Shapina, because it's supposed to be in defense position, bounce back the the Ubel. They're going to bounce back the Throne and the U-Bell here. That's making it so that the Throne doesn't activate. Um, and then just attack here with the Etoile, the SP, and then the Shapina, which they shouldn't be able to attack with the Shapina, but it pretty much be like bouncing, the, banishing the Shapina there um, so that they can deal some damage here anyways. But then end phase, we're going to see the Sonatas come back and everything gains a 1,000 again. Now the nice thing is they do get to add... Or, I guess, destroy once again with that copy of Nightmare Throne due to it being an activational effect. Uh, but they still have to deal with an Etoile, which is kind of difficult here. And we are approaching close to time. We're going to see the Throne being activated. And they have cards in hand. We're going to see Etoile bounce. And they are... They have a Veiler in hand, okay. So it's going to be bouncing the Throne... And then they can't activate another throne there. You can only activate one of them per turn. But we're going to be activating a Spirit of Ubel to summon out the copy of Spirit of Ubel. Or that that must be the that must be the Gates effect. Um, once per turn, you can discard one card to summon one Fiend Monster with zero zero from your graveyard. Okay. So we're doing that. We're discarding the U-Bell to summon out the copy of Spirit of U-Bell. And we do have the copy of Shavara here. Uh, my good boy, Shawarma. That's going to be able to destroy these spirits that try to get hit with a copy of the Veiler here. And then we can also chain the Yama to summon. So we can go Spirit's going to resolve, and then, because like once it's special summon, right? Yeah, you add to your hand, they chain the copy of Shawarma. And then we're going to be summoning out the copy of Yubel, Spirit, and we can rate, we can... 
I'm going to assume the Yama's banished here. I'm going to go for the Dreadnought. And they have an SP on the field, so they have to be careful of the SP. I mean, they also could have just chained SP to the copy of Shawarma, banishing that copy of Spirits. I'm not too sure why we didn't do that. We're going to go for the Dora here. Dora's going to be able to attack into that copy of SP. And this should be game, but we're getting, like, time's getting declared, like, about, yeah, like, time's getting being declared here in, like, the next 20 seconds. Um, so, we're going to be seeing time get called, and this is going to be a tie because, yeah, so time gets called here, and we see the Melodious player is up in the game, but the Ubel player just got game here. So we are both 1-1, one, one, and this is going to be ending with a tie. Hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more content like this. Stay safe. Peace.